we've got a 65 kilogram crate and it remains on rest, at rest so that all the forces are balanced on an inclined plane that is inclined at 23 degrees with the horizontal. Determine the coefficient of static friction. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to work out my weight, which is going to be 65 times 9,8, and that turns out to be 63, sorry, 637 newtons. I can then say that the components of that weight, there is a component perpendicular to the plane, there is a component parallel to the pl plane. And I am able to work out the perpendicular one by saying that it is going to be cos of 23 degrees. Remember, my 23 degrees can come up here. So cos of 23 degrees is equal to A over 637. And A turns out to be 586 newtons. So that's 586 newtons, and remember it is equal to the normal, 586 newtons. Then I have got my um, line that is parallel to the plane, and I'm going to use sine because it's the opposite side of that right angle triangle. Sine 23 is equal to my opposite over my hypotenuse, and that is going to be equal to... 248,89 newtons. So that's 248,89. And that means that the frictional force, if it's standing still, is also 248,89. Now we have to remember that frictional force, my frictional force is going to be equal to mu force normal. And my frictional force is 248,89. I don't know my coefficient of friction. And I do know my normal force is 586. So my coefficient of friction is going to be equal to 0, 0,42, which is 248,89 divided by 586. Now over here, I've got a 41 kilogram box. It slides down an inclined plane at 29 degrees, and then it says it's going at a constant speed of 20, uh, sorry, of 2,1 meters per second. Constant speed means that all the forces are balanced. So what is the net force on the box? Well, if everything's balanced, the net force is going to be equal to zero newtons. A car rests on a slanted ramp leading to a car transport trailer. The car's brakes and transmission are released so that only a cable is holding the car there. So we've got the cable, the cable will have a tension in it and that's holding it up the slope. The car has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. So if it's 1,000 kilograms, the downward force of weight is going to be 9,800 newtons. And the ramp is inclined at 15 degrees. If the car is motionless, so there's no movement, so I can calculate the normal over here, but it only wants me to calculate the tension in the rope. So I'm actually only interested in the component of weight that is parallel to the plane. And that component works out to be the opposite side of this triangle. So I'm going to say sine of 15 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse and that turns out to be 2536,43 newtons. If I take that same situation but now I'm interested in the normal force then what's going to happen is I am going to say I'm interested in the force that is equivalent to the component of weight that is perpendicular to the plane and therefore I'm interested in this adjacent side. So it's cos of 15 degrees is equal to the side I don't know which is going to be equal to the normal divided by 9800 and I find that the adjacent side which is the normal force because everything is balanced is going to be equal to 9466,07 
newtons. And the last one in this, if I have got a 5,67 gram coin, first thing I need to do is change that into a 0, 0,00567 kilogram coin. Once I've done that, because remember we need to divide by 1,000 to get into kilograms. Once I've done that, let's put it onto a plane. So I've got a coin. It has a weight of 0, 0,00567 times by 9,8. And that turns out to be 0, 0,056 newtons acting downwards. The angle here is 38 degrees. So if I work out the component that is perpendicular to the plane, I can put 38 degrees in there. And I can work out the component that is parallel to the plane and that is going to be equal to the opposite side over there. What does it ask me? Just begins to slide when the cover makes an angle of 38 degrees. So that's the exact point at which it stops being in equilibrium. So at that point we can say that for all intents and purposes the frictional force is equal to the component of weight acting parallel to the plane. Asks what is the coefficient of static friction? To be able to do that, I need to work out two things. Firstly, I need to work out my perpendicular component, the one that's perpendicular to the plane. So I am going to say that's a, that we've got cos of 38 degrees, because it's the adjacent side, is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, 0, 0,056. And therefore, this adjacent side is going to be 0, 0,044 newtons. Remember, that is going to be equal to the normal force. So force normal is going to be 0, 0, 0, sorry, 0, 0,044 newtons. My frictional force is going to be equal to, it's my opposite side, so sine, of 38 degrees is equal to opposite over 0, 0,056 my hypotenuse and I find that the opposite side turns out to be 0, 0,034. Now 0, 0,034 is the component of weight parallel to the plane but because this is basically the tipping point of an equilibrium situation it is also my frictional force. Now I can do a calculation where I can say frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction, because that's when the tipping point occurs, multiplied by the normal force. And then I can say 0, 0,034 is equal to the coefficient of static friction times by 0, 0,044. And my coefficient of static friction turns out to be 0, 0,78.